If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since I recorded a sit-down video. It must have been multiple years by now. And I want to talk about nutrition today. And this is something that reminds me as well of the old days of Bobby's perspective. Today I want to talk about nutrition in an Islamic context, of course, because here I am surrounded by Muslims where I live. And henceforth, I'm surrounded by Muslim food stands. Oftentimes, I see the halal sign. However, when I'm looking at that food, I personally see mediocre, unhealthy food. And listen, guys, I'm of course not here to give you a fatwa or anything. If the food says it is halal, we of course have to assume that it's halal. However, halal means permissible and not healthy. So we cannot conflate those things. If you're living in a Muslim country, of course, all the foods are halal by default. And therefore, you can make the choice if you're eating healthy food or if you're eating junk food. However, in non-Muslim countries, we have limited access to halal food. Of course, you do have a halal butcher. But when you go out, most of the time you see some fried chicken, you see some kebabs or any other type of junk food that then in turn is labeled as halal. So today I want to keep it short and concise. I'm not going to give you a whole nutritional breakdown, but I want to remind my viewers of what was available during the time of the Prophet Salahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because halal food, yes, by default is halal when it is slaughtered in a certain way. However, meat back in the day was not fried in vegetable oils like it is nowadays unfortunately common practice within the junk food industry. So therefore, I want to urge you to redirect your focus. It's great that you identified the label, you saw it as halal food, fantastic, but please look at that food and see if it is a whole food or not. Let us go through the list of what foods were available during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, we have dates and other fruits. Dates were a staple in the Arabian diet. They were widely available and provided a good source of energy. Other fruits such as figs, grapes, pomegranates and melons were also consumed. In an environment like the desert, hydration is key. Therefore, fruits are an amazing source of water, of course. The water and fruits is easily available to the human body, just as the carbohydrates that are found within those fruits. But moreover, if you look into dates, they do offer some B vitamins, for example, vitamin B6 and iron as well. The point that I'm making here is this is a whole food. Yes, this is halal. It is a fruit. Nowadays, the equivalent would be some fruit that is coated in sugar and chocolate. It would still be technically halal, but it was not found during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two, barley and wheat. Grains like barley and wheat were used to make bread and porridge. Bread was a common part of the diet. So now, yet again, this cannot be conflated with bread nowadays. Bread nowadays is bleached flour, processed junk, where they add sugar and vegetable oils into it. Those ancient grains from back in the day were complex fermented starchy carbohydrates, not something that sends your blood sugar onto a roller coaster. No, this would give you sustainable energy. This is unprocessed, this is fermented, therefore easily digestible. So please notice the difference between those two foods. Yes, both are called bread, but they're two different foods entirely. Number three, meat, especially lamb and camel was consumed. However, it's important to note that meat was not as widely available as other food items, and it was a luxury for many. This is something that we have to take into consideration. Of course, meat was not widely available as it is nowadays. You couldn't just go out and buy a hamburger, buy a kebab. But yet again, this video is here for you to redirect your focus. Meat is not just meat. Yet again, first and foremost, we all understand that kebab meat is just junk most of the time. It is processed meat filled with all kinds of salts and yet again, unfortunately, vegetable seed oils. Even if we're talking about the halal slaughter process, nowadays you have so-called halal meat and it comes from a slaughterhouse, an industrial-sized slaughterhouse. You just hear bismillah, bismillah, and the throats are slit. Those animals grew up in absolutely horrendous conditions and are just killed on a conveyor belt. It's absolutely repulsive, no matter if it is considered halal or not. Compare this to the slaughter process back in the day, but you can find it nowadays as well. You can find it in a halal farm, for example. If you would go 
out of your way and visit halal farms you can even do the slaughter yourself that meat is ultimately better for you for your family and it provides a better life for the animal as well it's a win-win situation Number four, milk and dairy products. Milk from camels, goats and sheep was a significant source of nutrition. Yogurt and cheeses were also made from milk. And here the crucial factor is raw milk. Because pasteurization, the process of killing all the bacteria in the milk, was invented roughly 1862. So around 200 years ago, people started killing all the bacteria, all the beneficial bacteria in milk products. Since then, lactose intolerance is spiking. It is absolutely everywhere, very prevalent. And people started drinking almond milk and soy milk and all of that gunk. Back in the day, you had way less lactose intolerance. Why? Because you had raw, unpasteurized milk that contained all the bacteria and the enzymes that are important for the digestion of milk. So the healthiest milk that you can consume is raw milk, raw cheeses, raw yogurts, etc. And this is why we can learn so much of the Prophet diet, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we look back at what he ate. Because we find very, very similar food items to ours nowadays, but when you look in detail, you will find that those food items were unprocessed, unpasteurized, unheated, not fortified, not diluted with vegetable oils, etc. Number five, honey. Honey was highly valued and used as a sweetener. It was also known for its medicinal properties. And here raw is the buzzword yet again, because the honey back in the day was not heat treated either and was raw. When you look into medicinal properties of honey, guess what? That medicinal honey is always raw. And the honey that you find within the supermarket is heat treated and has no medicinal benefits. Why? Number six, olives and olive oil. Olive trees were cultivated in certain regions and olives and olive oil were part of the diet. I know I talked a lot about vegetable seed oils, but the emphasis is on seeds. Seed oils are very high in PFAs, which is polyunsaturated fats. However, if you look at olive oil, on the other hand, olive oil has roughly 8 to 10% polyunsaturated fats. And therefore, if you consume vegetable oils, this would be amongst the healthiest vegetable oils that you can consume, aside from avocados, macadamia nuts. They're pretty all right as well. Number seven, vegetables. Vegetables such as cucumbers, onions, garlic, and lentils were consumed. The funny thing is we can't really talk about vegetable consumption here because let's be honest, when we're talking about onions and garlic, those are consumed sporadically. Nobody consumes big quantities of those vegetables. When it comes down to lentils, sure, this will be classified as a vegetable, no doubts about it. However, cucumbers are actually a fruit. And I'm not saying that to be a wise ass here. No, cucumbers really are a fruit and it's very hydrating, of course. We all know that cucumbers contain a lot of water and therefore, again, within a desert scenario, eating cucumbers would be amazingly hydrating for you and therefore a good choice of a fruit but not a vegetable. The reason why I mention this here is because you can see that the list of vegetables is very, very short. Nowadays, however, they tell you, you need to eat broccoli and kale to be healthy. So were those people back in the day not healthy? Did the prophet do something wrong here? Of course not. Broccoli, spinach, all of those greens are man-made inventions. None of those vegetables you can find in nature. All of those vegetables have been cultivated and now they are mass produced for people to eat. If you look, however, into the oxalate content of those greens, you will see that they can lead to kidney stones and be actually detrimental to your health. So therefore, reducing vegetables is actually much healthier for you than you would think. Number eight, nuts and seeds. Almonds, walnuts, and other nuts were eaten during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm not a big fan of nuts, nor would I ever make the claim that nuts are somehow an integral part of a healthy human diet. However, that being said, we can see the abstinence of peanuts, for example. And if we look into nowadays and age, peanuts are amongst the most consumed nuts, especially in the form of peanut butter. And peanut butter are grinded peanuts with vegetable oils and sugar. Moreover, peanuts contain aflatoxin, which is ultimately a toxin coming from mold. So if you're eating almonds and walnuts in their whole form, you wouldn't overeat on them necessarily. If you, however, spoon feed yourself with peanut butter jelly sandwiches, you can, of course, do the math. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I really hope that this opened your eyes a little bit and made you reflect upon food choices. Because as I said, being surrounded by Muslims here, man, I've seen horrendous eating habits. 
Just because it says halal, it does not equate it is healthy. Yet again, yes, it is permissible. I'm not here to rule anything out. But please reflect upon that those foods are nothing but treats. They can be eaten. You can treat yourself with it if you want to. But ultimately, this does not constitute a healthy diet. It really does not. Here in Thailand, man, 90% of halal food is simply fried chicken. They love that stuff. But it's absolutely unhealthy for you. Mediocre meat quality fried in vegetable seed oils. This is the tremendous to you and in the worst case scenario can lead to heart attacks etc we have to remind ourselves of what food used to be so therefore i want to refer you back to the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we know the first three generations were the best generations so if they were the best generations you would assume that they had by default the best life they had the best foods around them the healthiest foods of course why were those the healthiest foods simple because they were unprocessed Honestly, people make diets so complicated nowadays. Should I do keto? Should I do carnivore? Should I do vegan? The best way to go, first and foremost, is to eat unprocessed foods. Then the second step is to see how much protein you need and to adjust the protein needs. Then you go from there. But anyways, I said I don't want to talk about nutrition too deeply today, but simply refer you back to the original food items that we could find during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Guys, let me know in the comment section if you want to hear more about nutrition and then I will make an extensive video about that. But for now, this is it. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support this channel and now as always may god bless you all much love and peace